and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some mono green Itlamok that is starting off our Throwback Thursday stream here today. If you don't know about our Throwback Thursday streams, this is where we build around different rares and mythics that are going to be rotating out of standard here whenever Throne of Eldraine releases that didn't get to see very much standard play. And we want to we want to play the cards one last time before they leave the format for good. So um, on the YouTube channel, we got the, the playlist with some other Throwback Thursday decks. We've had some really good ones. I uh, recommend checking those out. Today, our cards that we're building around, of course, this one is built around Growing Rights of Itlamok, which I'll put up here. I'll talk about here in just a second. Growing Rights of Itlamok. Our other ones, we have Mardu Metal, which is Path of Metal deck. We have Mono Blue Antiquities, which is an Antiquities War. And then Naya Dinosaurs for some Jassath. Jassath is, was the, the card that was the most requested um, that I saw. Um, if if you have any rares and mythics that you know that we haven't built around yet, that you want me to build around on a future Throwback Thursday, which I think we have probably about five Throwback Thursdays left or so before um, Throne of Eldraine comes out. So you know about twenty more card. You know that means about twenty more decks or so. Maybe sixteen. You know maybe it's only four. Maybe sixteen to twenty or so. Uh, so yeah, leave a comment on the YouTube channel <laughs> uh, if you have any specific cards you want me to build around. All right. So what we got here? We got Growing Rights of Itlamok. When this card was previewed, this like came out as like a fifteen dollar card immediately, uh, like during pre sales and stuff, and and people were all hyped about it, thinking that it was going to be amazing. And it surprisingly has done basically nothing. The reason why everybody's excited about it is this second part, Itlamok, the Cradle of the Sun. This is Gaia's Cradle, but upgraded. Gaia's Cradle can only add a G for each creature you control. This can just, you know, just add a green mana also, and then also has that ability. Um, and, you know, Gaia's Cradle is like one of the, the most sought after, like EDH lands and everything. It's, you know, the, it's what makes Legacy Elves tick. Um, you know, it's like a, I don't even know how expensive it is these days, like 400 bucks or something ridiculous like that. But this is like a better land there. However, you have to jump through some hoops. You have to play a three mana enchantment first that does replace itself. So, you know, it enters the battlefield, look at your top four cards, put a creature from among them into your hand. So it does replace itself. But then at your end step, you have to, so you have to wait till your end step to ha and have four creatures and then you transform growing rights. So then you kind of have to wait till the next turn after that before you actually get to use the mana of the Cradle of the Sun. But still a pretty awesome card. So we're going to try doing that. So we've got a ton of mana creatures here. And then we have Jade Lights, which I thought about playing Elvish Rejuvenator, but I'm going with Jade Light just to get like the the uh, not only the card advantage, but also the card selection that the Explore mechanic provides. And we got some defense with Ripjaw Raptor, Cavalier Thorns. Biogenic Ooze is a nice card to find off of Growing Rights, and it's a nice mana sink. Uh, if, you know, we have a lot of mana with the Itlamok, we can just make a bunch of Ooze tokens. We got one of those in here. And then we're going with our top end of, of these two Planeswalkers, which are just incredible Planeswalkers, which are awesome to ramp into. Obviously Nissa, that also makes more creatures for Growing Rights of Itlamok. And Ugin, also makes more creatures for Growing Rights of Itlamok and gives us removal and gives us card advantage just an awesome planeswalker so we got those two to ramp into and then our really really top end we got the boar and raise forerunners given you know etb give all our creatures plus two plus true plus two plus two vigilance and trample and of course we're playing finales to go find the end raise forerunners because hopefully we're ramping you know like if we're going to make a lot of money mana with itlamok we're going to need to use all that mana so we're going to need Finale of Devastation to use all that mana. Uh, sideboard, I decided to go with a whole bunch of creatures. You know, Harpooner, Rexage, Rip, like, as you can see here, we're going with a whole bunch of creatures uh, because Growing Rights of Itlamok can help us dig for creatures. So I just wanted to play a lot of creatures in my sideboard. Um, so that's what we're doing there. And then I got a couple of Vivian Reeds for, like, the, the decks with sweepers that are going to be... Uh, destroying all my creatures we want some card advantage that's not creatures so we got a couple of vivian reads there are we going to be are we going to be defeating scape shifts probably not maybe if we get a nice end race four runners though you never know um but 
you know, against other just like regular creature decks, maybe we can go over the top. That's what we're going to be trying to do here with the Itlamok. All right. Let's uh, give this a try. See how it goes. Also, I one other little thing. I, I played, I'm playing Druid of the Cowl instead of Paradise Druid. I don't know. I kind of wanted the 1-3. I wanted, like, the defense. You know, like, this this deck, we want to kind of have some good defense. And that's also, like, Leaf can, can add two green man. Like, even though I'm not playing other elementals, but if we get our four creatures out, which we're, we're trying to just get a bunch of creatures out, then it can start adding two mana, which can be pretty important for Finale there. And Incubation Druid, of course, we can adapt. But instead of going with the fourth Incubation Druid, um, I'm going with one Druid to kind of split up, barely split up our two drops because of Legion's End. All right, with our Throwback Thursday decks, we go play them through a League here, Traditional Constructed League. We got Mono Green Itlamok. Did I even put any sleeves on this deck? Okay, yes, I did. Okay, good. What's our profile? Chandra, you're not... Let's see if you're You're not going to fit the mono green. Wait, we got Nissa. What a strange and magnificent All right, world. Okay, here we go. You're a huge fan of EDH, but Arena's opened you up to standard. Very nice. Yeah, Arena's just a lot of fun to play. What are you doing, Hawkeye? Just hanging out down there? Okay. Hawkeye's just laying down. Under the chair. I know. Definitely. Got to put the sleeves on to keep... Yeah, got to make sure we don't damage these cards. Uh, don't know if we want to keep this. Probably not. Yeah, I was just talking about you. We can try this. I'm going to get rid of Nissa, Which is kind of weird. We don't really have, like, the lands to make into creatures too much. Oh, like, also, like, the whole, like, Nissa can untap our growing rights. At, like, our Itlamok Cradle of the Sun could be, like, pretty crazy, too. So it's either get rid of Nissa or Ripjaw. And I feel like I want Ripjaw for, like, the defense. I guess Nissa plays pretty good defense, too, though. I'm going to get rid of Nissa. Hey, okay. Sad to come up here. Um, I guess we want to get our mana out first. You want Merfolk for next next week? Is there any specific card, Merfolk card that you want me to really build around? Azor's Gateway, this deck's a whole lot cooler than Goblet Shrine originally made it seem like it was going to be. Yeah, Kumena, regular Merfolk. I may just play that, like, on another day. That's not really a... Like, the, the throwback Thursday that I'm trying to do is, like, you know, play, like, the cards that haven't been played. But maybe there's, like, some Merfolk that haven't really been played that... Instead of just, like, Kumena. They're probably going to kill all my creatures. I suppose... Oh no, don't kill my raptor. No, my raptor. Well, 
Well, good news. We know we put a whole bunch of lands down at the bottom, so we should be drawing some spells. Like a finale? Darn. Wow, just ditching Cry of the Carnarium. You know, gets rid of two. Hey, Ranting Ravager. All right, Cavalier Thorns. No, not exile. That means we can't get my Ugin back. Poor Ugin. I have to draw a different Ugin. Alright, Raptors. Alright, get the sparks out of here. I heard you had some dead things that needed to stay dead. Uh no, Deckmaster is up and working. Am I? You won. This time. We will not fail. The land shall conquer you. How did you do that? So, you know, this is a creature with CMC zero, but Kaya is only non-land permanents with CMC one or less. It does not get to exile the forest there. I must seek comfort in the land. Our opponent's killing our stuff, okay. Killing our stuff. I hope you said you bet. I must go. Look to see me no more. So still pretty they're still pretty far away from flipping this thing. Um It's the best I can get. I guess Jade Light's the best I can get. That one actually got through. Jade Light's pretty good, though. I'll take a good Jade Light. Rude. Back from no, the, the Ugin's gone. There's our second Ugin, unfortunately. The Cavaliers have not not helped us too much with the with my Ugin problems, or like with my my not drawing Ugin problems. So grabbing Field of Ruin, because Field of Ruin can, can destroy the Sanctum of the Sun. I'll be back. Am I? Huh. No, my 4 CMC is Ripjaw, and I would rather have Jade Light than Ripjaw.
All right, probably finding another Jade Light here, hopefully. There we go. Yeah, they do not want me to have any sparks over here. They are taking sparks. Oh no. They have their own Ugin. That's the card I've been wanting to draw. Gotta pressure the Zugin. Like it so can't minus and kill Nissa. Be still. Yeah, the Cavaliers have given my opponent a whole lot of uh, fuel for this Kaya. I'm gonna make myself scarce. The fabric of the multiverse obeys me. This is, a, this is a good game, though. Even if Ugin takes over and we don't win this, this is a pretty good game. Could just draw a finale. Definitely consider playing a new Nissa to play around a single removal spell. I will seek but decided against it, and glad that we did decide against it. So they are just getting rid of lands. They are not trying to flip this gateway. I cannot protect you. So I'm, I'm assuming that Contempt was the creature they chump blocked with, because you know the Ugin was dying anyway, so chump blocking didn't wasn't really necessary. Hey, Corn Lover. You better well done. Look to see me no more. the ties that bind us all. Behold, nature's true power. Lucky hit. I have so many rats. Just tons of rats into sparks. Not... Fight on without me. Not an ideal game one matchup for me. But I got a lot of good stuff on my sideboard here for this matchup. We'll have our Reclamation Sages to blow up these things. And we'll have our Vivians. Ceratops could even be a haste creature. So they're, well, they, they've they played two Planeswalkers that could win the game. So I assume so far what we've seen for win conditions are Ugin and Kaya. They both do a pretty good job of winning games. <laughs> oh, but you can't hit me again. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see like Liliana, Karn. Good 
Really is it Finale of Glory? That could be a thing. No, I don't actually want to stop there. You won. This time. Hmm. I've only exiled threes and zeros out of all those cards. This Azor's Gateway has been just crucial for them, though. You can tell they've gotten rid of nine cards <laughs> they didn't really need. Like, they've looted, they've looted nine times. That is crazy. I've never seen a Gateway loot that many times. Hmm. I'm going to make myself scarce. I got 38. I'll play this thing. Definitely felt like they had more removal that they were going to be using here. Yep. Because Cavalier of Thorns isn't so great in this matchup, but they're going to have all this exile. You know, they played three Contempts, three Disparks. I don't know if I really want the Cavalier of Thorns to mill over five cards twice like it has, and it's you know milled over my Ugins. I may be cyborging that card out, honestly. I had guild business to attend to anyway. I just gets exiled by Kaya again. You won this time. Hey, six one nine. Okay, so a bunch of Rex Ages, Ceratops, Vivians, Cavalier out. Okay, uh, Leafkin Druid isn't really uh, doing a whole lot. Like, the game's going to go super long. I think we can take out some Leafkin Druids as well. Because they can't attack. And there's no such thing as blocking here. Um, what else? Ripjaw? All right, trim a couple rip jaws. All right, let's see how this goes. Yeah, I guess. Oh, I, yeah, you're right. I probably should have taken the other. Um, taking the other rip jaw out and put in the voracious hydra.
Yeah, we're playing Path of Metal in Mardu. Yes. Please give me that card. Um, so if I go Incubation Druid, I could have Ugin next turn. So could just be Dispark here. I mean, it's probably Dispark. We saw so many Disparks. Oh no, my growing rights. So actually, what I was doing there is I wanted to see. I wanted to try to play growing rights into Reclamation Sage into flip growing rights. That's how. That's what I wanted to do. But yeah, now we get this. So got. Cannot protect itself. Be wary of the ground. Got a little punish there. Let's keep these for us. Well, let me activate this before they don't let me activate it. Harness the elements. I know more than you could learn in a thousand lifetimes. So destroy Dawn of Hope or start making two twos that get card advantage. I like start making two twos to get card advantage. If they want to spend four mana to make one ones, that is fine with me. I think we can. I think we can beat uh, one ones. And so they have settle also. So cleansing novas, Kaya's wrath, settles. This is the anti-green creature deck. Yeah, activating Field of Ruin or just getting a forest is like the same thing. Right? All it does is get a land out of their deck. I don't know if we really need to get a land out of their deck. I can help you no longer. Truth lies beyond division. Well, I'm glad. Glad we ticked up Ugin the two times. I am not glad that they did have the two removal spells for my Planeswalkers and we're still drawing lands over here. Not glad about that. Hey, Elijah. So there's two Dawn of Hopes. Is it really worth blowing one up? Do I save this? I guess we do need to blow this up to have lethal the next turn. Because if they 
If they just if their plan is just again make a one one and block, it's not lethal. I have 8 mana, so I can finale for 6. I need a finale for 8. I'm gonna make myself scarce. To get Endray's Forerunners. So I'm 1, one mana off of Endray's Forerunners, kill them. Um, I can go grab the Shifting Ceratops, though. Okay, we're going to game three. Oh no! Oh, I forgot about the Kaya. No, I was just being cute and killing their Kaya also. <laughs> oh, I forgot about the other Kaya. I had guild business to attend. I was thinking about like I was already thinking about like what sideboarding I wanted to change, or and you know like or if anything you know I was I was thinking about that like with the voracious Hydra and stuff, and I just forgot about other Kaya. <laughs> uh, thank you, opponent. That could have been better. Could have been better. It worked out exactly how I was how I wanted it to work out. Exactly as I wanted it to. Yeah, so like, if they had nothing in hand, the trample from the Ceratops was going to finish that off, so maybe they had nothing in hand there. <laughs> yeah, that, that might have been a pun. I think y'all could be right on that one. All right, game three though. Good old Rex Age. No looting for you. Look for more lands. Sweet. Perfect Jade Light. So yeah, I decided to go with the Kral Harpooners instead just because they're cheaper I uh, decide to go with those over um, other options incubation let me play his Ugin next turn let's play this Yeah, they could be doing Throwback Thursday as well. You never know. More Jade Light Rangers. That card's really good. Alright, not as bad as Liliana. Liliana would have been really annoying. Ugin. Do not defy the designs of secrets. Manifest before you. Now we can play a cheaper Ugin. Too many unreliable variables. Ooh, I like a good fight. Notice I didn't say fair. Here's what happened. You beat me this time. 
Bravo. Hey, Chaos. Glad to have you here. All right, let's play this dinosaur they know about. You won. And so, like, if they have another Dispark or Contempt, now that we only have one Ugin left, I would rather get this Disparked or Contempted or something like that than the other Ugin. Undead make great minions. Loyal. Oh, I do love a good death whale. A good death whale. Is that, like, the biggest mammal in the Death Sea? Death won't conquer me so The death easily. whale. <laughs> good, not fired. That's good. <laughs> uh, eight and a half tails working at home today so you can catch the stream. Yeah. Guess I should go to attack first, and then I could have played Ugin here instead, but oh well. Ugin's still great. I just want Ugin to make four. I, I really hope my opponent does not concede before we get to flip this Growing Rights of Itlamok. I do not think they're going to concede now. So I think we're going to be flipping this growing rights. Truth lies beyond vision. No. It is a may. I think I wait a turn. No, I want to save the finale for Andre's Forerunners. Secrets manifest. No, no, that's really bad for me. I concede. Oh, that's really bad for me. Ooh, that's really good for me. Um, I need. Uh, no! I was holding full control. Darn it. I was going to make another ooze to turn into a 3 3 here. The fabric of the multiverse obeys me. All right. It is boar time. They do know about the Rex Age, so yeah, it looks like maybe they're just taking one of these tokens. So I don't Rex Age their the binding. How much mana is this? So that's 5, 15, so 13. And raise four runners. They all have trample because of the four runners. And vigilance and haste. We did it. Our deck did its thing. Look at Gaia's Cradle over there. The Cradle of the Sun. Hey, that's cool. We got an angel for how that game went. It was so angelic. Sweet. 
<laughs> oh got to. I'll have to crunch the numbers. Was that was that lethal? No. It might have been. I'll have to crunch the numbers. <laughs> I walk in and I see a bunch of 18 wheelers trampling over an opponent. <laughs> um, I'll have to go back to this previous song there we go alright where are we at we're, we're right here oh we have a blast zone in this deck that's cool We'll have to check with the zoning committee whether or not this area will be suitable for blasting. But there's a good chance that it will be. Wizards. Flyers. I don't know what's going on over here. It changes each turn. When you understand reality, bathe in ghost fire. I guess I could have gone Nissa then Ugin. I guess I should have done that. You had two, so two, three, four, five, uh, I guess I'm tapping you, five, we get to attack for four. I didn't really play around Spell Pierce, to be honest. I could have. Could have played around Spell Pierce. By doing the untap. the rally. Alright, so Jeskai Flyers, huh? Jeskai Skies. Jeskai's. You, you, you. Alright, get some insects up in here. You can have reach. You have reach. You can kill stuff. Alright. Um, I don't know about you. Kill that enchantment. I don't know. You're a maybe. I think we take out you. Hmm. Yeah, Vivian kills flyers also. So maybe you too. One of you? I mean, I, I guess I have to get rid of, like, the cool parts of my deck, I guess. I've got six cards. Go 
Go with this. There's an enchantment that pumps. Yeah, or yeah, just just that one. Yeah. Yeah, Vivian can kill that thing too. All right, so Nissa gone. It's either Nissa or Itlamok. Itlamok can help us find like Harpooner, and we have a lot of good creatures to find with Itlamok. I'm gonna keep Itlamok. Harpooner, Cavalier Thorns, all that kind of stuff. Finale, it's like four mana Harpooner, seven mana Cavalier Thorns. Still worth it, considering we usually have like extra mana. Those cards are pretty important. I'll get that thing in play so the next turn I can give it reach. doesn't this means I don't actually have reach up anymore <clears throat> but maybe we just race him kill that thing that draws cards and I guess we actually just race him because we can we get one more man and we get the other ceratops haste which is not lethal which is a problem hmm One short of killing them. If they have Rally of Wings, I'm dead. If it's just a regular Anthem, I'm okay. It's just Rally of Wings being double Anthem. One point short there, giving a Ceratops. If this if this incubation druid, well, no, we would have had to use that for mana. Uh, they made this attack very confidently, like Rally of Wings. That's a card I just can't beat. Yep, they had it. Darn. So then when you have three Kral Harpooners in your sideboard and you still die to the flying deck, so you don't you can't find any of them. And you still die to the flying deck. Sad. Three harpooners and three finales to go grab harpooners. And had zero. Hey, Boot. Yeah, Throwback Thursday. We're playing some sweet decks today.
We got Growing Rights of Itlamok up first here. Um, yeah, Brawl is based on standard. The cards that are in standard. So cards that rotate out of standard will not be available in Brawl. Wow. Say that was a pretty good pretty good hand here for our opponent so far. Turn two Risen Reef that hits a land. Don't think it really gets any better than that. This is going to be tough. It's not bad. But like next turn I'm playing Cavalier. I'm just going to keep it. I like kind of like having Jade Light being a 4-3 also. Thanks so much, Boot. All right, yeah, we're playing the land destruction deck tomorrow. If you haven't heard of me, then get ready to meet my flames. <laughs> Omnath with his Cheeto fingers. Omnath does have Cheeto fingers. <laughs> Never thought of that, but that's definitely true. I've always wanted to make a really big fireball. Yeah, turn turn three Chandra is not bad at all. Not bad at all. <laughs> maybe <laughs> no maybe it's a uh, maybe it's a combination of. Like one hand, or like two hands are Cheeto fingers, two hands are Dorito fingers. Could be both. Hey Storm, good evening. Yeah, and then and then just drinking a whole bunch of Mountain Dew also. That that's definitely that 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 elemental right there. Definitely that one right there. Oh, they're petting the cat. Next Saturday, corn lover. Oh, I meant to put that. This Saturday, I won't be streaming. Saturday and Sunday. This Saturday and Sunday, I will not be streaming. So the other time I take, I usually like there's like two times I take an off day um, during a month, basically, and this is the second time, but it, this one's two days. So no stream Saturday or or Sunday. Let's move that up one line. It's not covering the cat up. Whoops. There we go.
Ethar itself serves me. What can I do with this finale of devastation? This biogenic ooze. Their hand was pretty incredible here. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to cast Finale for Exus 10. We need four more lands, though. It's going to take a little bit. I'll take some time. Alright, that's lethal. He's just attacking, puts me down to one. You want a double chump block. Where the emblem kills me. Yeah, that was just an incredibly good hand for our opponent. Um I think I want this extra Ripjaw, extra Cavalier for some more big blockers. I'm not really sure what to take out. Maybe the... Hmm. Definitely going to take out one Jade Light. And then it's either another Jade Light or the Biogenic Ooze. Is Ripjaw even better than Biogenic Ooze? Maybe it's not. Maybe I'll just go this. Let's try this. Oh, maybe boot, I don't know. We'll see. All right, so hopefully we get to flip this into the cradle and then, and also draw finale for that extra mana. But if our opponent goes turn two, Risen Reef, turn three, Omnath, turn four, Chandra again. That's the best card. They got the enabler. Yay, no Risen Reef. I'll try putting them on the defensive. I honestly don't know if this is a good attack or if I'm supposed to be sitting back and making it so the Omnath doesn't kill me. Like, I don't know if that's beneficial for us to trade for life and for life. Like, considering, like, assuming this Omnath is going to be a 4 4 here and attacking us for 4. I'm not sure if that's actually a good trade. Like, if we just trade for life away. I 
The thing is, like, it could be... Okay, well, now that's definitely not a good trade. I was, I was thinking they could play Cavalier or Thorns that would make the Omnath a 5-5. Though... No, I definitely shouldn't attack with Ripjaw. Both parts of Itlamok are legendary. So have it, like having the other growing rights out there isn't really that important. I'd rather get this other creature out here. So under race four runners give them plus two, plus two vigilance and trample. Didn't really want to just ha grab two lands with the shade light. Looking for the finale. Hey, Rockle Guru. Do we see any finales down here? No, we did not. So I'd love to draw a finale of devastation. Oh wait, but we already we have the four runners in hand, so drawing finale eh, it gives our creatures plus ten plus ten at least. I guess it does that. We have so much more mana that we don't even get to use. Am I supposed to just a kill? Am I supposed to just kill Nissa to attack them all at them? How much total power is this? So that's ten, nineteen, twenty-one. 23. They need to block with 8 power worth. So they basically have to block Forest, Forest, Leaf Kin Druid not to die. I guess it's all at them. Killing Nessa would would be nice. I was kind of unfortunate with the two, or like, it's been a lot of not so great cards here. Like after finding that Jade Light, it was just two lands and a land war all for the next three cards. But we're well through half of our lands. Let's see, right? Because three, six, seven. I guess eight, nine, ten, eleven. So gone through eleven lands. They go down to one with this block. Let's 
see if they have a basic mountain or not. I'm gonna get rid of that red source. And they do have a basic mountain. And yeah, I wanted to do all that. I wanted to do that after damage. They don't get the counter on anything. So I hope we draw Finale or Ugin. Finale, though, would be the best. Now, Field of Ruin does not destroy basic lands. Both of their blockers were basic lands. The land fights for us. Ugh. I just got another land out of my deck. How are we drawing more? I guess I sh I did shuffle all those lands that were at the bottom, though. Alright, that field of ruin play. Not looking great. Spring Eternal. So is that... Is that lethal? Um, like, Omnath Nissa is... Really broken. There's way too many lands in a row for us here. Their draws. I guess we drew a land war elf. Woo. To go in with all those lands. You can add a green mana for each creature we control. The Cradle of the Sun. So we have a lot of... Have, a, have had a lot of mana the last few turns. Even casting Endrace Forerunners, we still had like another like 8 or 10 mana. I think... I think like 9 or 10 mana. Even after casting this. Because of the Leafkin Druids. Of this world. Didn't have yeah, didn't have the mana sinks. Rise, my elemental friend. We still have a chance. Tapped out. We have to draw a finale. Oh, they're they're obviously not tapped out. They have those things still. Nope. I guess I should have killed Nissa instead of doing a bunch of damage to them, I guess. That's kind of a tough attack. Alright, so that was our Itlamok deck. Didn't have the best of luck. But we got to flip Itlamok a couple of times, the Growing Rides of Itlamok a couple of times and have a whole lot of mana. We did get to do, we did have one time of finale for Endre's Forerunners. That was amazing. Kind of feel bad about like the game two against the flying deck. Um, my seven card hand wasn't very good. My six card hand wasn't very good, and didn't go to five. But you know we have all these harpooners, and then like yeah like the ceratops, the cavaliers, the half reach. Like I I thought that we were going to be pretty good there post board, especially like the finale devastations to grab the harpooners and everything, but. 
didn't uh, our hands were pretty bad there uh, game for game two, and we so therefore we lost that one. Could have attacked them down to one. Uh, we were one point away from killing them, but then. But then, yeah, um, and then yeah, against the elementals, we just really flooded out there in the end. They had they had just had a ridiculous game one hand, and then flooded out there towards the end for game two. But the deck felt pretty strong though, you know. Like basically, that's what I'm saying. Like our our games that we lost kind of felt, you know, unlucky, kind of thing. Um, I liked how this deck played. I liked. Growing Rights of Itlamok. It was cool. That was a fun card. Ugin, obviously, just amazing for us. Finale was pretty good, too. Like, just finaling. Like, we did a lot of, like, five mana finale for Jade Light. And, like, that's perfectly reasonable. So, like, having having a card that just completely wins the game when you have 12 mana, like finale, but is not just a dead card when you don't have 12 mana. When you don't have 12 mana, you can still use it as, like, a card advantage engine. Or, as we talked about, you can use it as, like, to get all these like sideboard bullets even though they cost two more mana they're the kind of cards that are really important in different matchups honestly this finale card is good i liked it maybe i need to build more around finale of devastation i think it's a pretty good card uh correct this doesn't so ragabosh so this does not give trample but we had the we had the end race forerunners in play that already has trample and um, we could have gotten, because I had Ceratops, did, did I have Ceratops in my deck? I thought I had Cer maybe I didn't have a Ceratops in my deck. My kind of, my plan was like to grab a Ceratops, which was another trample creature. Maybe I didn't actually have a Ceratops in my deck though. But yeah, this doesn't give trample. But yeah, so you want to play creatures with trample. But I think, I think with us getting, like, even if we didn't have Ceratops, which actually now that I think about it, maybe we didn't have ceratops we would have had we had voracious hydra though in our deck right this has trample and even though it's a zero one like it doesn't come in with any counters but it still gets the plus 10 plus 10 from this so like it's still like a 10 11 trample and then this thing was going to be like 17 trample but yeah um yeah, pretty cool deck, though. I think we're going to have to build some more around Finale of Devastation. That, that seems like that's probably an underrated card. Anyway, uh, if you're watching this video later on YouTube, uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. Also, uh, leave a comment. Let me know what cards, what rares, mythics that are rotating out, like Growing Rights at Itlamok, do you want me to uh, build around for a future Throwback Thursday? Even if you've left a comment before on a different video, feel free to do that again. But thanks so much for watching. Mono Green at Lamac here, and I'll see you for the next video.